The House then comes to questions for oral answer, and the first question stands in the name of the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Uh, Mr Speaker, my question is to the Prime Minister. Does he stand by his statement that, quote, we have actually delivered a budget that saw a credit rating upgrade in New Zealand. The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, yes. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, supplementary question. If, as he claimed, a change in outlook uh, by Standard & Poor's is a credit upgrade, is he now admitting that a change in outlook downwards by Fitch is a downgrade in New Zealand's credit rating. The Honourable Leader of the Speaker, Opposition. Yes. <laughs> the, the, Mr. Chris Tremaine. To the Prime Minister. What did the Fitch ratings release say about the New Zealand economy? The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Fitch was concerned, as this government is, about New Zealand's persistently large current account deficit and rising foreign debt. It goes on to say that because of these imbalances, the government needs to rein in spending. We outlined a balanced and credible plan to do that in the budget, and Standard and Poor's backed that up. If the opposition is worried about a much smaller player, Fitch putting us on negative outlook, Mr. Speaker, it should tell us how it te intends to make further cuts to government spending, because that's what Fitch wants. The Honourable uh, Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, sup supplementary question. Supplementary question. Can he explain why Fitch downgraded New Zealand's credit rating after analysing the last national budget and his own speech on nationals' plans for the future? The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, Mr. Speaker I can explain uh, one of two things. The thing I can explain, uh, Mr Speaker, is that Fitch looked at a very large current account deficit something that the Labor opposition between 1996 and 1999, led by Michael Cullen, campaigned on doing something about, and they did. It doubled under their watch when Michael Cullen came to office. But what, but Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, what I can't explain, well, Mr Speaker, what I can't explain was what was going through Phil Goff's mind yesterday, because at one point it was welfare for millionaires, and today it's welfare for nobody. Sounds like the pixies at the bottom of their garden got swine flu overnight, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The question, Mr Speaker, apropos the Prime Minister's last comment, does he believe that a person who was made redundant should get no transitional financial assistance for job search or retraining simply because his or her spouse earns $26,000 a year. The Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, I do, and they already get it from MSD. Chris Tremaine. Chris Tremaine. To the Prime Minister. Order, 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 order. I do want to hear the supplementary question from Chris Tremaine. Chris Tremaine. Supplementary question to the Prime Minister. Has he seen any recent reports about the previous government's management of our economic imbalances? The Honourable Prime Minister. Funny enough, yes, I have. I've seen a report which says, and I quote, I do not pretend either that our record was perfect nor deny that there were significant questions unresolved. Our current account deficit, something that Fitch put us on negative outlook for, was stubbornly high and the savings deficit was unsustainable. Productivity growth was too low, end quote. That frank and honest assessment came from a recent speech to the mood of the boardroom, Mr Speaker. It was, of course, by David Cunliffe. Oh! The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, is it the Prime Minister's intention next year before the budget is released to show the budget in advance to Fitch as well as to Standard & Poor's uh, if we're going to allow the rating agencies to determine what is a budget that is meant to be for New Zealanders. The Honourable Prime Mr. Minister. Speaker, we need to get one thing perfectly right. Fitch did not put New Zealand on negative outlook because of the budget. Actually, if they'd followed a budget that Labor would have written, them, Moody's and Standard & Poor's would have downgraded New Zealand. Chris Tremaine. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Prime Minister. To the Prime Minister. Has he seen any reports of alternative fiscal strategies, and how does he think ratings agencies would respond to them? 
The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, yes, I've seen reports of the opposition arguing that they should have further tax cuts, expand the welfare state, bring back large Kiwi saver subsidies, reinstate tax credits, and spend more on tertiary education, early childhood, overseas aid, and health. This massive and totally irresponsible increase in government spending would have, get, would have set New Zealand on a downgrade by every single rating agency, and Phil Goff knows that's the case. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, is it part of his plan to impress the rating agencies by using proxies such as Mark Weldon and John Whitehead to promote national secret privatisation agenda? The Honourable Mr. Speaker, Prime Minister. <coughs> Mr Speaker, well, if, if John Whitehead was a proxy, how come he was leading... How come he was Secretary of the Treasury under the last nine years of the Labor government? Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Prime Minister, does he agree that one of the central drivers for these imbalances in foreign debt and current account deficit in the New Zealand economy has been the housing market speculative bubble? And will his government support measures that tackle the bubble directly, such as a capital gains tax excluding the family home, ring fencing the losses from investment properties? The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, uh, yes, in answer to the first question, and in terms of the latter question, the member will be aware that Bob Buckle is leading a tax review. Um, I don't want to prejudge that review. Uh, because there may be all sorts of things they look at, but I personally have stated many times and can happy to state again today I do not support a capital gains tax. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The question, Mr Speaker, is it uh, also the Prime Minister's attempt to impress credit rating agencies that he's appointing Don Brash as head of the Productivity Commission, notwithstanding that brings back an agenda that the electorate rejected decisively in 2005? The Honourable Prime Speaker. Minister. Mr. Speaker, well, from my memory, we only lost the 2005 election by a smidgen, so, so I'm not quite sure that's the right assessment. I'm not sure that's quite right. And, Mr. Speaker, I don't know if I've missed something, but I cannot understand the Leader of the Opposition's fixation with rating agencies at the moment, because when, when Standard & Poor's upgraded us, they apparently were the guys that got it wrong with Enron and shouldn't be believed. 